بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Last two questions, and these are actually related to uh, more manhaji type of questions. Some of the youth in Toronto have been infected by the disease of Yahya al Hajuri. Yahya al Hajuri, by the way, is an innovator, a mubtadi' who has made huge errors in the usul and the aqidah that I don't really want to go into detail with, but there is a website called hajuri.com. H-A-J-U-R-I dot com and you'll find many of the aqwal of Ahl al-Ilm from the major scholars and also from the lesser uh, from, from, the, from the lesser ones who have written refutations against this innovator Yahya al-Hajuri and it also mentions how many years the scholars were patient with this man Yahya al-Hajuri his speech for example regarding Usman radiallahu anhu his speech for example regarding the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that they were the ones who initiated Al-Irja, that they initiated the Bid'ah, Al-Hajuri, Afwan. A-L-H-A-J-U-R-I dot com, Al-Hajuri dot com. Now, he, he made an accusation against Uthman radiallahu anhum and against the Sahaba. He said some of the, that, that the Sahaba, some of the Sahaba participated in the killing and the assassination of Uthman. No Sahabi was involved in the killing of Uthman. That's the, that's the ta'an. And an attack and a revilement upon the Sahaba. The Sahaba are going to kill Uthman when Uthman was married to two of the daughters of the Prophet sallallahu among in front of whom the angels are shy. And the and the uh, and the mountain of Uhud shook when Uthman and the Prophet sallallahu and Abu Bakr and Umar were upon the mountain. So these Sahaba who know this about Uthman, they are the ones who are going to be involved in the killing of Uthman. This is the accusation that he made against Uthman. Two things here. Number one, his jahl in the usul of the deen. Because no Salafi would utter that. Even if he did not know the story, the first thing that the Salafi would do is excuse the Sahaba from killing, without even knowing the story. If someone said to you, Uthman was killed, what is the first thing that would come to your mind? Well, that must have been the Sahaba. The first thing that would come to your mind is, it must have been the enemies of the Sahaba. Because this is the Salafi, this is the nurturing of the Salafi, that the Sahaba, automatically we free them from blame. Then he said, that the bid'ah of irja, those murji'ah who believe the actions have no, the actions are not from iman, and that iman does not increase and decrease, he said that this bid'ah was initiated by from, from some of the sahaba. Again, this shows his bid'ah and his jahl, his ignorance in the usul. Because the first thing when you say that there was a sect that arose in the early part of Islam, and they are known as the murji'ah, and they say the actions are not from iman, and they believe that Iman does not increase and decrease. Is the first thing that comes to your mind, well, the Sahaba must have been involved in that. The first thing that's going to come to your mind is actually the Sahaba are free from that. Even if you don't know the sect, even if you've never heard of the sect in your life, you're going to say, no, not the Sahaba. Because that's the, that's the purity of the heart of the Salafi towards the Sahaba, the cleansing. The, this is how clean our hearts are with regard to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. He said that Uthman radiallahu anhu innovated the bid'ah of the adhan. He, is, the, he innovated this, this adhan, this, this second adhan on Yawmul Jum'ah. Whereas actually the, the position of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is that, the action, that when Uthman did it, the Sahaba accepted it by ijma'ah. It's ijma'ah that the Sahaba accepted the second adhan, Yawmul Jum'ah. And there was a reason why he did it. Uthman radiallahu anhu. And then he was carried on from the ummah there onwards. Up until even in this era, Shaykh al-Albani said, that if there is a need for a second adhan, Yomul Jum'ah, in the same method and in, for, the same, uh, for, 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 for the same reason that occurred in the time of Uthman, then we do the second adhan even in our times. Shaykh al-Albani. Shaykh al-Albani said this. Ahmed Shakir, similar speech, that if you are following Uthman in the manner that Uthman did it, then yes, second adhan is allowed. Bin Baz, Ibn Uthaymin, Shaykh al-Fawzan. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, who is this ignoramus who would say this, that Uthman innovated? And we are not to do it. And the one who does it is a mubtadi'. Who is this ignoramus, misguided individual who rejects this ijma of the salaf of this of the sahaba radiallahu anhum themselves? So this is Yahya al-Hajuri. Then when some of the scholars tried to correct him, and there's much more, the ghulu with regard to what, what, what he would allow his students to say about him. If you were to melt his skin down, and you were to melt him down, you would find nothing except the pure sunnah. This is Yahya. Basically, if you melt the man down, what you're going to get distilled is sunnah. That the ulama of the salaf, 
the likes of Shafi, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Malik, and they would have, the, even the Sahaba would have a need for the knowledge of Yahya al Hajuri. And he's sitting there, mashallah, mashallah. Right? When he got caught out, well, actually, I didn't approve of it. But the thing is, initially, why would, you, why would any Salafi alim that he claims that he's an alim, which is another problem that he has, conceited, arrogant, proud, that he sees himself as an alim. When they ask Sheikh, Sheikh al-Albani, not even ask Sheikh al-Albani, when they introduce Sheikh al-Albani as the muhaddith and the scholar and the alim, al-Albani started crying that I don't accept what he has said about me. This is Sheikh al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, if anything, I am a talib. They would not accept that a man would call them an alim. This man says about himself that I consider myself to be an alim. Al Albani said, I consider myself only to be a small student of knowledge. So look at the humbleness of them and look at the arrogance of this man. His character is wicked. When he criticizes others, he goes to ghulu. So when someone differs with him, straight away he's a mubtadi. Sheikh, Sheikh, what did he say about Sheikh Ubaid al Jabari? Look what he said about Sheikh Ubaid al Jabari. Sheikh Ubaid al Jabari he said he's a safi, he's a ghabi. Sheikh, Sheikh Ubaid al Jabari, that his speech is like, the, is, is, is like the breaking of the wind of an old woman. In fact, he used even more despicable speech than that. I've just, just you know, I've cleaned it up for you. That his speech is like the breaking of the wind of an old woman. This is what he says about Sheikh Ubaid. Why? Because Sheikh Ubaid corrected him. Abdurrahman Adani, Hafidullah from the scholars of, of Yemen, declared him to be an innovator years ago. Why? Because he differed with him doesn't know the adab of ikhtilaf. So the scholars for years and years have been advising this man. Sheikh Rabi has been, Sheikh Rabi said, stop this tabdi'ah. Abdurrahman Adani is Salafi. So stop this behavior of yours. He said, okay. Went back to Yemen. He said, I will not stop it. Abdurrahman Adani is a hizbi. Arrogant. Says one thing to the, one thing to the mashaykh, goes back and does something else in Yemen. This is Yahya al It is no wonder that the scholars have almost like Abdur, uh, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab al-Wasabi and some of the other scholars of Yemen, they have said that he is an innovator by the consensus of the scholars of Yemen. Sheikh Rabi refuted him. Some of the, some of the mashaykh, they said that the term, if the term Haddadiyya had not already been coined after Mahmoud Haddad, this extremist who used to declare the scholars to be innovators, that if the term Haddadi had not already been coined beyond, behind Mahmoud Haddad, then that, then that characteristic would be called today Al-Hajuri, Al-Hajuriya or Al-Hajawira. That's what it would be called. But Haddad had already taken the, you know, the name, the title. So, so Yahya Al-Hajuri, Sheikh Rabi refers to him as Haddadi. Sheikh Ubaid Al-Jabri declared him to be an innovator. Muhammad bin Hadi refutes him. Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari refutes him. This man, no one should refer to him in ilm. He has the worst of manners, even the most wicked of tongue, when he refutes others. He has bid'ah, oppositions to the aqidah, oppositions to the usul. So the next part of the question, and now you know who we're talking about. One of the key callers to Yahya al-Hajuri is an individual by the name of Abu Fajr Abdul Fattah al-Somali. He is one of the key callers in Toronto to the da'wah of Yahya al-Hajuri. So if Yahya al-Hajuri is that, then do you need an answer for this, miskin? Is an answer even needed? I mean, do I have to waste time now upon this youth? He's a young boy. He used to actually email me quite often, even when he was a teenager. You know, we are with the brothers at Maktaba Salafi, may Allah reward you. But, and, and actually makes sense. Because here in the question it says, sadly, this, in the, this young boy, when he, when he used to come to this masjid, he was upon Salafiyyah. And he used to have love for the ulama. Then he turned to bigoted allegiance to Hajuri. He went to Dammaj, became Arab. Because if you hang around with Hajuri for too long, you, you pick up those traits of arrogance and haughtiness, self-conceitedness. This is Yahil Hajuri. And he rubs off on his, on his followers. He rubs off on them. And this miskin, Abu Fajr, who we refer to as actually Abu Fajur, that's what every, the Salafis who, 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 uh, 
who have been afflicted by him because on the internet, wallahi, if you want to become famous, I don't advise you to, inshallah, being khamil and being anonymous is better. If you want to become famous, all you have to do is stay focused upon the internet for about a week and a half. Tweet everything, write everything, email the dunya, set up a Facebook, then find, you know, make a hundred friends, two hundred friends, five hundred friends, and all of a sudden, they'll say, have you heard of Abu, F- Abu Fajr al- Abu F- Abdul Fattah? That's how he became famous. Not because of any khair, not because of any goodness, not because of any da'wah, not because of any tawheed that he calls to, not because of any sunnah that he calls to, but because of fitna and fasad. That's all. What do you, e- email me, examine, what does Maktaba Salafiya say about Ubaid al-Jabari? What? You miskin, you are the age of my, you are, you are the age, really, of my son. That's his age. That's the age of this Abu Fajur. At the age of my son, you're asking Maktaba Salafiya. Maktaba Salafiya was, was a Maktaba giving da'wah when you were possibly one year old or two years old. We were giving da'wah before you were born. Sheikh Ubaid al Jabri was giving da'wah before I was born. And I'm 45. 45 or 44? <laughs> huh? If you look in Hijri or Miladi. Right? This is Sheikh. You're asking what's Maktaba Salafiyah position towards Ubaid al Jabri? Do they recognize his fault? This is this Abu Fujur, Khabib. He's a filthy individual with a filthy tongue. If this is what his Sheikh is like, he is just a more ignorant version of his Sheikh. And his Sheikh is ignorant. So who would sit with him? Then it says at the, uh, the second part of the question, it mentions he turned to Hajuri, he became active, and he began slandering the scholars. Of course he did. Even there again, Sheikh Rabi now. They would say, no, Sheikh Rabi did a telly link with Damad. Sheikh Rabi is with us, Sheikh Rabi is with us. Then Sheikh Rabi said, actually, I did the telly link to advise him and to, and to show that I have nothing personal. This is Da'wah, this is Deen. This is why Sheikh Rabi did the telly link in the fitna when the, when the Shia were attacking them. So Sheikh Rabi, of course, he's going to, hey, this is the Maj. The Maj is not just Hajuri. The Maj is thousands of people. So Sheikh Rabi is giving them da'wah because he regards them to be Ahlul Sunnah. So they use it as a, that this is now a tazkiyah for Hajuri. No problem, Sheikh Rabi didn't answer. Sheikh Rabi said, khalas, my, my intent was da'wah and, and, and islah and I wanted to, to aid them and this is my niyyah, alhamdulillah. Then when, when Sheikh Rabi eventually refuted him, they said, Sheikh Rabi doesn't know. We don't accept from Sheikh Rabi. And nor do we accept from Ubaid al-Jabri. Nor do we accept from Muhammad bin Hadi. Nor do we accept from Abdullah Bukhari. Nor do we accept from Muhammad Bazmu. Nor do we accept from Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab al-Wasabi. Nor do we accept from Abdul Rahman Adani. Nor do we accept from Abdul Aziz Bur'i. Nor do we accept from Muhammad al-Imam. Who's left? <laughs> Who's left? Now they're going around because normally what you do is you look for people who are praising Yahya al-Hajuri. Now look what they're looking at. Now they're saying... Well, we haven't heard Fawzan criticize him yet. Uh, look how it switched now. First it was, Fulan praises him. Fulan praises him. He has a tazkiyah. He has this one. Fulan praises him. Now, now they're looking for who doesn't criticize him. Ah, he doesn't criticize him in Ha'il. He doesn't criticize him in Egypt. Now they're looking for who isn't criticizing him. So from, from, the, from the aspect of tazkiyah, that's out the window now. But actually, Sheikh Al-Fawzan, when the points were read to Sheikh Al-Fawzan... Of the mistakes of Yahya al-Hajuri, Sheikh al fawzan said, this man should not be studied with. And he should not be referred to. And I fear that this person is a misguided individual who is trying to introduce his bid'ah. Introduce his misguidance amongst the people. Why? Because they read to Sheikh al fawzan the con- that he made this mistake and then he repented. Then he makes that mistake, then he repented. Then he made that mistake, then he repented. And now he's made this mistake and he has that mistake. And he keeps doing this, oh Sheikh. He said, don't study with him. This is Hajuri. So now you have this miskeen here, and I say he's a khabith, because I've seen his emails and I've seen his filthy language towards the scholars, this Abu, Abu Fajur. Right? This individual, he's a youth. And sometimes, you know, I even feel in my heart, why am I even bothering speaking about him? But he's made himself a reputation on the internet as something. And I don't want you to be deceived by him. He's nothing. In anything, he is not to be referred back to for anything. Neither he, neither is Sheikh nor him. Then it is said at the end, a local Somali-centric mosque. 
known as the Bukhari Center, has become the hub for this man. He teaches there, right? Is that, is, that, is, that, is that what you intend by that? He teaches there. So what do you advise the community? No, my advice is clear. That the scholars, that they have warned against Hajuri and they've declared him to be an innovator. So all of those texts regarding Ahlul Bid'ah apply to him. And, and, he, and, and also to Abu Fajr. Up until he frees himself and he repents from what he said about Shaykh Ubaid and Muhammad ibn Hadi and Abdullah Bukhari and what he said about the Salafis around the world, all over the world. So he is not to be sat with. And wallah, even if he was sound, I mean, even if he wasn't with Hajuri, I would still say, tell him, bring your tazkiyat from Shaykh Rabi, Shaykh Ubaid, Muhammad ibn Hadi, from the ulama. You can't just turn up from Yemen. We don't know who you studied with, who you sat with, where you're from. And just because, you, just because you've been there for five, six years, learnt Arabic language, and you're going to come and pretend to be a mini sheikh? We're not interested in this. We want to know who is there who recommends you from the ulama, al-kibar, from the major scholars and the well-known scholars. Then after that, we want to know which of the Salafi marakis are you working with? Who are you working with? Are you working with Masjid Furqan in Troy? Are you working with Masjid Sunnah and Nabawiyyah? In Philadelphia? Are you working with Masjid Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab in Camden? In Philadelphia? Are you working with our brothers at Masjid, uh, Masjid Ahlul Quran wal Hadith in Washington DC? Do you work with our brothers in Baltimore in their masjid? Do you work with the brothers in, in Masjid Rahma? Who are you with? I'm with nobody. Then we are not with you either. We are not with, we want to know who you're with, which ulama are you with? So this person is not to be taken knowledge from. He is a sick, his heart is sick. This Abu Fujur. You read his writings and you see the sickness that is in his heart and you see it in his writing. And if this Bukhari center have set him up as one of their teachers, then don't go to them. And don't sit with them. And don't take knowledge from them. Advise them to fear Allah and take the speech of the scholars against Yahya al-Hajuri and his followers who are staunchly following him in his innovations. Tell them to take the speech of Shaykh Rabia and Ubaid al-Jabari and Muhammad ibn Hadi and Abdullah al-Bukhari and the Mashaykh of, e of Kuwait, and the Mashaykh of Egypt, and the Mashaykh of Yemen, all those that I've mentioned, take their speech. If you don't take their speech, then we are not with you, Barakallahu Feekum. We are not with you in this affair. No. Um, the question is, if there's brothers in our community who like differ from you guys and maybe follow, I'm just going to give an example, like Yahya al or whatnot, they claim to be Salafis. How do you interact with them? Like, do you still, like, they're upon some nuts, so they say, like, do you still befriend them or do you cut them off? From the signs of the innovators is they speak ill of the people of narrations. So those who spoke ill of the, the ulama, the likes of Sheikh Rabi, Sheikh Ubaid, and other than them, then they are from the innovators. That's clear, without doubt. So do not be deceived by the length of their beard or they're raising their trousers and claiming. Uh, everybody claims. Everybody claims that Layla is theirs. And Layla says, I don't belong to any one of you. So it is one thing to claim something, but in reality, are you upon the sunnah? In reality, how are you going to be upon sunnah uh, without being with the ulama? Without being, and re, you're reviling Ahl al-Ilm, reviling the... I mean, if we were to look at the detail of the reality of these individuals who are blind followers of Hajuri, then you look at the situation of what Hajuri himself said. He said the Prophet ﷺ made mistakes in da'wah, in the means to da'wah, wasail al-da'wah. How you speak about Rasulullah ﷺ like that? He said that the first to partake in irja', irja are the Sahaba, the first to fall into the bid'ah of irja' are the Sahaba, how you speak about Sahaba like that? And likewise, the, the Sahaba partook in the killing of Uthman, radiallahu anh, billah. How you speak about Sahaba like that? So it's not just with that particular group, it's not just they spoke about the ulama, they spoke about Rasulullah sallallahu and the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. And they have to make tawbah for that. You have a big stick for other people, and a small little miswork for yourself. No. You should also stick, hit yourself also with the same big stick that you're using for other people. In his Friday prayer book, 
Hajuri has a whole page speaking about the Sahaba. A whole page where he says about the mistakes of Sahaba. Of course, he's talking about not to have ta'asub, not to be partisan to anyone. Anyone commit mistake. But you don't list all mistakes of Sahaba in a whole page. In the new print, he took it out, but he didn't say why. Be sincere and say why. Say that I made tawbah. Say that I made a mistake. Why for other people, big stick, and for yourself, small little miswak? No. You have to also you be sincere and be truthful and say I made a mistake in these affairs. So in that situation, don't mix with that kind of group. That kind of group, they are innovators. They are partisanship to who? From the signs of the innovators, we said they are partisan to this particular uh, person. That is partisan. That is ta'asub. We don't have that. That's hizbiyya. That is partisanship. No, ulama, they already spoke about these affairs. And they clarified these affairs. Sheikh Rabi Havadullah already refuted that. So Uthman did bid'ah, they say. Uthman did bid'ah. On the Friday praying, I did an extra adhan. Sheikh Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, what did Sheikh Sa'ad Fawzan say? Sheikh Sa'ad Fawzan said, the one who said this, his statement is bid'ah. Sahaba, they don't do bid'ah. Sahaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, radiallahu anhum wa radu anhu. Allah is pleased with them. And then please with him. Sahaba, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا ذُكِرَ أَصْحَابِ فَمْسِكُوا When my companions are mentioned, withhold your tongue. So, speaking about Sahaba, this is not from the uh, way of Ahlul Sunnah. Not the way of Ahlul Sunnah. Rather, we make excuses for them. And this Abu Fajr, he lied about me as well. We said, oh, you spoke against Sahaba. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ I translated the whole book by Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Abbad. And that book is what? A book about defending Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiyallahu anhu because Abu Sufyan uh, uh, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan he is a curtain as Abu Tawbat al-Halabi said he is a curtain for the rest of the Sahaba once you speak about him it's like you draw that curtain to speak about the rest of the Sahaba so we defended Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu by translating that book by Shaykh Abbad and we translated books on defending Sahaba but he used a statement a statement that I said with regards to Aisha radiallahu anha, where she said, and I never said she spoke about Sahaba, I said, she said, when Janaza was brought into the masjid, Janaza was brought into the masjid, and some people said, Hadihi bid'ah, this is an innovation, and this is a mistake. And so Aisha replied, this is a narration from Aisha, Ma asra an nas ila an ya'ibu, ma la ilma lahum bih, how people rush to say something is wrong without knowledge. So he used that statement. He said, look, he's speaking about, he's saying the Sahaba did bid'a, he's speaking about Sahaba. First of all, be truthful. Allah says, kunu, kunu sadiqin Be with the truthful ones. Don't, speak, don't lie about people. And his refutation that he had, alhamdulillah, the brothers who put a table, a whole table, where they clarified all of his lies, one after the other. Be truthful. And subhanAllah, Last summer, I received an email out of the blue. And guess who's from? It's from Abu Fajr. I'm sorry, Akhi, I made a mistake. No, 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 no. This is not how it goes. You don't apologize to me secretly. You apologize to the whole dunya for the evil that you created and for the lies that you mentioned. You have to apologize to the ulama, to the scholars that you have refuted and you're reviled and you've spoken ill of. You have to re re apologize to Sheikh Rabi. Go to Sheikh Rabi and apologize to Sheikh Rabi with Allah for having spread stuff about him being a rotten flower. You have to apologize to Sheikh Rabi' and you have to apologize to Sheikh Abid al-Jabri and other scholars, those of you have reviled and you've spoken ill of. You have to apologize to Sheikh Abdul Bukhari and others for what you have said. So don't write me no, no secret email. Don't write me no secret email. Make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala openly, just like you made, you harmed openly and you lied openly. So be careful from this, in these groups. These groups, they're not safe to be with. We had them in England, and subhanAllah, where are they now? We're in it long term. We're in this da'wah long term. We're in it, inshaAllah, may Allah subhanahu give us uh, 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 tawfiq and thabat upon sunnah, upon tawheed and sunnah, that we die upon this blessed path. We're on it, inshaAllah, until we die. This is not a, 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 a hizb, a party or a group that you just, or a club that you just join every Friday or every now and then. This is the deen of Allah. This is not a joke. And Allah is our helper. And He is the one who gives us victory. Ni'ma al-mawla wa ni'ma al-nasir. And those who oppress, Allah la yuhibbu al-dhalimeen. Allah doesn't like those who oppress. 
And what is the reality of these hajuris now? Where is it? What is the reality of them? Scattered, dispersed. The situation is furuta. And Allah mentioned that in the Quran. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَيْشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ Be patient with those who call upon their Lord morning and evening. Be patient with them, the ulama, ahl sunnah ahl ilm Be patient with the best of the people, the ahl, the ahl al-athar. وَلَا تَعْدُوا عَيْنَكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُوا زِينَةِ الْحَيَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُطْعِمَنَا فَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُوطًا That is their case. Their affairs are all over the place. And that is what you find now. Some of them, they were so shadid upon themselves. Some of them said, oh, don't go on a bus because it's free. It's free. You're mixing with women. Don't go on the bus. The person, so much extremism they used to have. Don't go on the bus because you're extreme. You're extreme. This is uh, mixing with women. Don't do this. Don't do that. They couldn't keep it going. They couldn't keep it going. Look at the affair now. One now has got a shisha, a shisha shop huh? with a shisha. Another one is he's got his, uh, in a wedding dancing. Huh? Sallallahu alayhi wa With mixing with the women and dancing with no chest, with no, uh, uh, with open chest. Sallallahu alayhi wa Ya akhi. Ya akhi. It was just a game, wasn't it? For you it was only a game. And Allah said, وَمَا هُوَ بِالْهَزَلِ And it is not a game. For us it's not a game. This is deen. This is deen. And we will meet you Yom Al-Qiyamah for the rest of the affairs to be solved, inshaAllah. So don't write me no email. Huh? Don't write me no email. Yom Al-Qiyamah we will meet, inshaAllah. I'm waiting. فَانْتَظِرُوا إِنِّي مَعَكُمْ مُنْتَظِرُونَ So wait. We are also waiting. And Allah says, فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ So wait until Allah brings His command. So we're waiting for you Yom Al-Qiyamah, inshaAllah. Bismillah.